Okay, well it's about, uh, I think it's probably about six o'clock on Saturday morning, about, about mid-November. And I reckon it's about 10 years since I first started building this structure. Um, I think as I said in the first video, I built the structure over a couple of, uh, couple of months because I didn't have the time to put into it at, um, all in one hit. But yeah, I think it was about 10 years ago that, that most of this would have been finished and certainly the, the planting and the movement was, uh, was starting to get underway. So 10 years seems like a fitting time to just have a bit of a look through and see what's going on. Most of my days in that last 10 years have started about this time of the day, sometimes earlier regrettably, with a walk through the veggie patch. And um, one of the rewards has always been scattered here and there are just a few raspberries. Now, I, I don't think in that 10 years the, uh, the raspberries have ever made it to the kitchen because uh, that's one of the rewards of being first into the veggie patch. And especially when Elder Daughter's not home, who's a, a definite raspberry thief, first in, best dressed. Mm. They're just superb. Girls are making a bit of noise over there, so um, we might shut them up. So just for ease and convenience, I keep a bit of chicken food out here in the veggie patch, just in a, uh, a steel, a steel um, garbage bin so the rodents can't get into it. And at the moment we're just feeding them a, a, a scratch mix. Probably um, probably the not, not the best food really in the veggie patch because like all... Uh, like all chooks, they have favourites, so they dig through, they eat all the sunflower seeds out first, but a lot of this, um, a lot of this wheat and, um, and barley, they, they sometimes leave and that will sprout. So maybe a good organic chicken pellet might be a better thing, but at the moment, this is doing the job. Anyway, morning girls, how are you? Time for breakfast. Okay, let's get up here. Yeah, so there they go, picking the sunflower seeds out. Might just um, say good morning to one of these guys. So at the moment I've got a few, um, there's, uh, there's seven, seven in here, which is about the right amount. Three of them are, are these um, commercial crossbreeds, which are an Australorp crossbreed. And I think these guys in particular might have a, maybe back in their ancestry, there's a bit of uh, a bit of Welsh farmer. I mean, a bit of Welsh miner, actually, I think, judging by the way they dig. So <laughs> these guys are particularly good diggers. Um, I mean, I, I moved these guys two weeks ago, and this patch was a serious jungle, and you can see in there most of it's been smashed. So um, they're certainly doing their job. And uh, I'll let this uh, young lady go back and um, have a bit of breakfast, and uh, with a bit of luck, she'll uh, produce me an egg. There you go, love. I think she might have even, oh look at that. Left me a bit of, uh, that's good fertiliser. We'll put that somewhere later. Okay, so um, <coughs> just into, um, into this bay. So this bay was, was planted out two weeks ago when I moved the chooks. And um, what I mentioned before about the feed, you can see there's a little bit of that, that um, feed uneaten feed that's sprouting here but I'll just let that grow a bit more and pull it out that's not a problem so this was planted beginning of November so we're right into summer crops now um, so you can see along the back some tomatoes I still always grow the the salad greens but this time of year they tend to bolt to seed a bit um, I've still got some peas down the side there's some uh, some beans here I've left a bit of space around here to put some more beans in that I'll uh, do later this weekend and um, zucchinis, still, still celery, rocket. Bit of um, this is a this is a land cress. It's like a, a like a water cress, um, but land cress. Spinach, silver beet, kale, a um, couple of capsicums. So you know, standard kind of uh, what I'd put in a standard summer mix. I tend to roll that over normally. Uh, I start summer crops beginning of October um, and, and I'll show you later on in some of the other bays there's, there's not much point growing cabbages and uh, broccoli and things after that because uh, the white moth just smash them so um, anyway let's go we'll have a look in the next bay <coughs> so
So um, just in here now, so this bay was planted um, six weeks ago, so beginning of October. Again, good summer mix. You can see, um, well already, I mean that shows you how fast radishes grow. Look, this, this guy's gone to seed already, so he's completely matured and gone to seed in six weeks. Um, oh, over here we've got, um, look at that, first cucumber of the season. If we were another two days later, I'd pick that. They grow pretty quickly. You can see there's three nice ones coming on there, a couple, two, two more behind them. So that's, um, that's two cucumber vines. I would only plant them every second month in summer because as you can see, two cucumber vines probably pick you on average about a cucumber a day during summer. So, you know, unless you're a cucumber fiend, then um, that's a fair bit. All right, um, elsewhere, just tomatoes, beans again. Pretty much the same mix as the last bay. Um, and you can see everything now is coming on quite well. Uh, I really should jump in and do tie a few more things up. Um, but, you know, we don't have all that much time often, often so uh, that's, that's life. Anyway, um, so next, next bay, so this one uh, was beginning of September, and you can see, uh, well actually look, this, here's a, a good example. We've, um, we've got here a lettuce that's actually, um, actually it's, this has started to bolt to the seed head. I'll, um, I'll see if I can still salvage a bit out of that. Um, I'm about to uh, pop down the coast with the boys, so I'll take a bit of fresh salad with us. So with, um, with something like that, I just clean off some of these uh, more ordinary leaves. You can see there's a bit of rot coming in there. L like mentioned before, I don't spray anything in, in here. If it, uh, if it doesn't survive, uh, then it's not meant to happen, so we just grow something else. So there's, some, um, there's still some good leaves around there, so that one could go in the basket. We'll sort that out inside. Um, same with this, um, with this mignonette. So again, a few leaves there. This bucket will go over to the girls. Obviously, uh, judging by the noise they're making, they're on to that. So we'll just grab a couple more of them. So again, just you can see you, you start to get a bit of rotting around the bottom. You probably minimise that a bit if you. Um, my uh, my watering system here is um, is a, is a uh, above ground watering system. If everything was watered under the ground, they'd be less inclined to be rot. But some of it comes from our environment too, where um, we're quite humid down here on the south coast of um, New South Wales and I suppose I've got to add Australia because uh, you never know where these, uh, these things end up. Um, while we're here, you can see there's a couple of broccoli here that have been picked. Now these, um, these guys are being smashed by the, um, the white butterfly. I'm just trying to find a grub. Should be one around here somewhere. Yeah, so these, there's a little, little green grub that um that eats all of the, all of this brassicus family so that you know um, the, the main things they hit are cabbages because they're called a cabbage moth cabbages broccoli cauliflower and really after well i find after about october once it warms up um they, those um they, they really start to hammer things so rather than get involved again with chemical sprays i just tend not to um not to uh not, not to grow them and um, I mean there are there are other methods of, of keeping them away but again I'm normally a bit time poor and um, and so I tend not to use them so we've got some snow peas coming on here um, you'll see down the bottom of these snow peas they're starting to get a bit of wilt again that's not helped by this um, humid weather and um, I've actually found throw them in the basket the boys can have a few of them I've actually found that the, uh, the sugar snap peas are a little bit less susceptible to the wilt, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to switch from snow peas to sugar snaps. I actually prefer them too because they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit bulkier and um, when you let them fully mature and fatten up, they're just so beautiful and sweet. They're one of the uh, true pleasures of having your own veggie patch is a fresh packed sugar snap. Anyway, um, we might take a wander into the next patch. 
I'll just drop this in for the girls on the way past. And um, here you go, girls. Some greens. Oh yeah, get into them. Look at that. See. So I normally try and uh, I normally try and give them at least that quantity of greens as well um, each day. Probably not so much the first week when they're in there and there's 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 heaps of things that that are still growing. Um, but now that they've uh, chewed everything down, um, I just give them uh, you know a, a half a bucket or so of um, of scraps or. Sometimes I'll just reef out a full old broccoli plant and throw it in. But I try and give that to them each day just to keep their greens up because it's really important they have that as a supplement in the, uh, in the feed. Anyway, moving right along. So uh, November, October, September. So this is August, August Bay. Um, pretty much picked all of the, the salad greens out of here. There's a few weeds. Um, starting to come through so it's probably uh, about time I got in and, um, and removed them but um, we can do that later again. Broccoli and cauliflower up the back that are um, being hammered by the, um, by the cabbage moth. Um, the, the, ca the, the kale which is in behind here uh, that doesn't seem to get quite as, um, quite as hit but I, but I have had bad seasons where even the the kale gets taken out. Um, we've got some good beetroots coming along here and um, and pretty much I mean it's only now six weeks till the chickens come in here so this bay is really starting to roll off um, roll off production. We'll just um, pop into the last bay. So um, you can see this is now August so this is July um, there's not, I mean we're still picking uh, some silver beet, still picking some kale. Most of the snow peas have been pretty much taken out by the wilt now. Um, we've got some good, there's some good beetroots down the back here so you can see, and that's a, there's my fist, that's a good sized beetroot. Um, I've got a new pickling recipe with, uh, that's, that's made from um, apple cider vinegar and honey rather than, uh, rather than white vinegar. I'm going to give that a go on these so I'll pick about a kilo of these um, over the next couple of days and, uh, and, and get some of them down in, in the brew and, uh, and see how they come up. I might even come back to you on that if I've got five minutes. Um, so nothing much else in here. As you can see weeds are pretty much starting to come through now. I wouldn't bother weeding them because they're going to be greens for the girls in two weeks when they end up in here. That there. Um, okay, so in a minute we'll just go out and have a look at the raised beds out the back. Um, just on the way out in the, in the other two permanent beds, um, I've got strawberries and blueberries. Um, even with a bit of luck, oh look at that, there we go. Here's another prize, a couple of fresh blueberries. Again, as pointed out before, first in best dressed. There you go, Jesse. <laughs> um, so we've got strawberries either side. Now, um, yesterday we had a bit over 39 degrees day. That's 39 degrees C for you North Americans or whoever. I'm not sure whoever use, else uses uh, Fahrenheit, but that's about 103. So in most people's books, that's a fairly warm day. And you can see some of these, um, some of these strawberries got a bit burnt. Now, um, Look, if I was, you know, again had a bit more time, I could have put a bit of shade cloth over the top. That's one of the beauties of having the, the roof there. You can just throw a bit of shade cloth out. You might have even noticed back in the first bay, I, there was a green roll there. That's just a roll of shade cloth, and I'll, I'll roll that out if I think there's a bit of really hot weather coming, just to give a bit more protection. Um, but you can see a few of these strawberries really copped a bit of a hammering yesterday. Um, yeah, so, they'll, but they'll, they'll come good. If they don't, there's always next year. And um, I think that pretty much winds up 10 years in the, uh, in the veggie patch. So we'll wander out, have a look at the raised beds.